Here is the process for constructing a slurry wall. To begin with, you construct starter walls and you can see them in this photo. They are two concrete walls. They don't have the scalloped shape as uh, you would use for a secant pile wall. These are just straight walls to guide the bucket doing the excavation. And that is the bucket. You can see it's quite massive because it depends on its size to uh, go down uh, perfectly vertically and to keep following the same path to quite a depth. Slurry walls, in my experience, I've built them over 100 feet deep and I've been on projects where they've been constructed over 200 feet deep. This was uh, filmed in Boston where there's clay, very, very deep layer of clay. And you can see the material come out in one uh, solid piece of very stiff clay. You see the red pipe in the background? It's pumping fresh slurry into the trench. The trench is being excavated at quite a rapid pace and the slurry must be constantly replaced to uh, keep it uh, at that uh, level. You depend on a trench filled with slurry in order to keep the sides of the excavation open. The crane is an ordinary crawler crane. There's nothing special about the crane. So what is special and what is unique to slurry wall construction is this bucket, which is designed to uh, remain perfectly vertical and also to open and close its jaws within the confines of the slurry wall. Now this is a different kind of device. It's a hydro mill. It is not a uh, clamshell bucket as we saw in the previous clip. This is a different way to construct slurry walls and fortunately both techniques were being used at this site so that I could capture both of them. The labor on the right is standing on a group of pipes and those pipes go around the perimeter of the project. They bring fresh supplies of slurry to the excavation and they also carry away the slurry that's being displaced as you fill the trench with concrete. Also interesting to point out the laborer on the right is wearing a life preserver which I think is an excellent idea but the other people on the site uh, are not wearing life preservers. Now all this constant hosing down of the equipment, I think this is more than just cosmetic. The equipment comes out of the trench coated with slurry. And I believe as the slurry dries, it would harden and begin to build up quite a film on the equipment. So they constantly hose it down so that you cannot develop that film. Now I've actually speeded up the video here because it was taking forever to raise this out of the hole. I don't know if that was an excess of caution or if the operator was just uh, stretching out the time because this was getting very close to lunchtime. Now you can see just coming out of the trench, uh, that's actually a pump. And in this process, you uh, grind the excavated material. You actually liquefy it so that a pump can pump it out of the excavation. So now you can see the cutting heads 
It's uh, quite different than the clamshell bucket. These uh, are rotary heads which are outfitted with teeth and they can dig through very very stiff material. They can actually uh, dig into rock but they can also be used to remove the clay just the same way that you would remove it with the clamshell bucket. Now this is a good overview. You can get a sense of the size of this equipment if you compare it to the operator at the left of the screen. We're going to take a break now and please continue with the lecture material where I will explain the process of placing concrete under water. It's called the Tremi process and after you go through that material you can return to the second half of the video which will demonstrate uh, that process in use.